In response uh, to you, Gaylene, I'd like to say a couple things about as it was in the days of Noah. Mm -hmm. And also, I would like to address briefly the issue of the apocryphal works and whether or not they're canonical or not. And uh, this seems to be the heart of the matter. It's, again, the idea of religious authority. Right. Now, Jesus, in his Olivet Discourse, his Sermon on the Mount, I should say, delivered from the Mount of Olives, uh, which was, incidentally, the place where he ascended in Acts chapter 1, the place where Zechariah tells us he's going to return to the very place. And Jesus told, or the angel told, uh, those who were gathered on the mount when Jesus ascended in heaven, this same Jesus whom you've seen ascend shall so come again in like matter. manner. He will come personally and he will come physically. He's not going to be a, um, you know, a dream or it's not going to be a ghost. He's going to come as an actual human being albeit with a glorified humanity. So he said in this sermon, he said uh, that people are not going to know the day or the hour, that it's going to be a, a mystery to people. And uh, he said, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven or the Son, but the Father alone. For the coming of the Son of Man must be like the days of Noah, it must be just like that. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away. So will the coming of the Son of Man be. Now Jesus, or at least Matthew's record of what Jesus said, is explanatory as to what he meant by as in the days of Noah. The key thing to understand is that he's shrouding this in mystery to the extent that no one is going to know when it's going to happen, which is one of the big errors with a lot of Christians today. They're establishing when, when Jesus says, you can't. Then he makes the analogy between Noah's days and the days before his second coming. Because the day of the Lord is a time of catastrophic judgment upon this planet, upon this earth. It will be prefatory to his second coming. So it's going to be like the days of Noah. But in the text itself, what it says is, for the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah, for as. This is an explanation of what it was going to be like shortly before the coming of the Son of Man. And you don't see any of the stuff in this that they're reading into as in the days of Noah. It just is non-existent. Are we to assume that uh, Jesus did not understand DNA, that he didn't quite understand, uh, you know, the, the complexities of modern science and so forth? Are we going to impugn to him that he was uh, a man who didn't really know? He could have. If he wanted to say this kind of stuff, he would have said it. But what I see here is, for as, explaining what it means that his coming will be like it was in the days of Noah, he says... In those days, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. There's nothing of the kind of uh, activity that, that you, Sarah, and, and, and you have written about, Galen. All it is is that people are so engaged in the normal stuff of life that they're oblivious that Jesus will even come again. The second thing I want to address is the idea of extra canonical books. Hmm. Because to believe what Jesus believed is consistent. To believe other than what Jesus taught is inconsistent. If you're a Christian, you believe what Jesus believed. Every doctrine in the Bible can find affirmation in the person of Jesus Christ. He taught in accord with Holy Scripture. Now, to go back to the non-canonical books, we'll take the apocryphal books that were written during the prophetic years of silence between Malachi and the coming of John the Baptist. The Jews just couldn't stand the silence, so they had to manufacture books that they ascribed uh, some inspiration to or the books that they came from God and so forth. But the church, although it valued those books for devotional books, never ascribed any canonicity to them until the Roman Catholic Church did it at the Council 
of Trent. My point is that Jesus looked at the canon of Scripture through the lens of what books were already there in the Old Testament. That is, the law, the prophets, and the writings. He spoke about that in Matthew, or excuse me, Luke chapter 24. The things which are written in the law, the prophets, and the writings. Jesus quoted scripture in engaging arguments. Paul quoted scripture. You have no quotation of one apocryphal book by either Jesus or Paul. You've got one isolated reference in the book of Jude, I believe it's in verse 14, but prefatory to mentioning Enoch, Jude never says it's written. He never ascribes canonical authority to it. He's just simply quoting it as an illustration of the judgment that's going to be coming upon the false teachers, something they felt they were immune to because of their false teachings. So if people ask me the question, well, why don't you believe the apocryphal books that they are to be contained in Scripture, I tell them because Jesus never quoted from them. He never recognized their authority, although they were in existence at that time.